Algebra 1, 13.1a. We're in a new chapter, chapter 13 now. We're going to talk about quadratic equations and in the standard form. This whole chapter is about quadratic equations. So we just learned in chapter 12 that a quadratic function can be defined by these equations. It can either be y equals or f, you know, the function of x. So either way, that's a function, as long as a doesn't equal 0. And we learned that the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola, like this. It's this U-shaped guy. When the domain x is a set of real numbers, that's facing upwards with the open side up, so we know that's a positive, right? When y equals 0 in the quadratic function, then our equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So instead of equaling y like this, you're going to see the equation written equaling 0. And this form is called the quadratic equation. It's a standard form of a quadratic equation. Remember that a can't equal 0, all right? So when they're in this form, the values for b and c are allowed to equal 0. It's perfectly OK. This could be a 0, and that could be a 0. So we could end up with just ax squared, couldn't we? The value for a cannot equal 0. So if we saw this, this is a quadratic equation. We've got our invisible 1 coefficient here, don't we? It just means that b equals 0 and c equals 0. So all we have is the x squared. That's OK. That's a quadratic equation. But this is not. Because if the a is a 0, then that means 0 times x squared, that means 0. 0 times x squared is 0. That means our equation is really just an x plus 1, and that's not a quadratic equation. We need that x squared there, see? We can graph the function y equals x squared minus 2x minus 3. Remember, we used the uh, negative b divided by 2a to find the vertex. Now, if you're lost and you don't know what I'm talking about with this, you need to go back to videos 12.4a and 12.4b and watch those, because we talked about graphing these functions using a table or using the vertex by doing this and the axis of symmetry. So you got ahead of yourself, all right? So there's links in this video's description that you can just go back and click on them, then come back to this one and you'll be fine, okay? No confusion. So we got our ordered pairs here from making our table, and when we plot negative 1, 0 right here, see that? And we plot 3, 0 right here, and we find our vertex, we can draw our parabola. Well, these values right here, these coordinates that I chose, these two, they're solutions to the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And so are these, see? The vertex is at 1 for x and negative 4 for y. See that? It's right there. OK. So they are solutions to a quadratic equation. It's set at 0. See that? So what's the difference between being a quadratic equation and not being a quadratic equation? Well, let's take a look at are two lists here. These are not quadratic, and these are, okay? So let's see what makes them not. Well, first of all, we talked about this one. We've got our a set as 0. Can't do that, because that means all we have is 2x plus 1 as an equation, because 0 times x squared is 0. So we really have this. That's not a quadratic. a can't ever equal a 0, okay? In this one, the x has the wrong power. It should be x squared. In this one, it's got the wrong power. It's x to the first when there's no exponent, right? So that's the wrong power. It's got to be x squared. Now, what about this side? Yeah, this is a quadratic equation. It's written in the correct form. See? And our b value is that invisible 1 coefficient in front of the x there. And this one is a quadratic equation. The b and the c are set to 0, so we just have x squared equals 0, just like I showed you over here, x squared equals 0, all right? This one is in correct form. This is perfect. It doesn't have to be plus, okay? It could be a minus in between them, as long as we've got our terms correct, and it's set to equal 0, and we've got that x squared. This one can be rewritten, so it's in quadratic equation form. It says 
8x squared equals 64. If we subtract 64 from both sides of the equation, we end up with 8x squared minus 64 equals 0. Well, that means the b value is 0 and the c value is 64. See? Inverse operations. For 2x squared equals 8x minus 3, this can be rewritten into the correct quadratic form because all we have to do is subtract this 8x minus 3 from both sides and that'll just move it over here, okay? And then it'll look like this. It starts out as a positive 8x, but once we subtract it from each side, it's going to be on this side as a negative 8x plus 3. See that? For this one, 3x squared equals 7. We could do the same thing we did with this one. We can just subtract 7 from each side of the equation, set this side to equal 0, and now we've got 3x squared minus 7. The b is set to a 0 and the c is a 7. See? Just remember the value for a cannot equal 0. All right? And if the b and c are set to 0, we don't need them in the equation. If b and c are 0, don't even add them. Okay? So the quadratic form of an equation like this, if it looks like this, or we can use inverse operations to make it look like this by subtracting from each side or, you know, rewriting it like we did with these, it's a quadratic equation. A cannot equal 0, but B and C can. We just don't include them in the equation when they do. All right? So there's going to be a lot of links to everything we covered in Chapter 12 so that it'll help you catch up if you need it. And our next video, 13.1b, we're going to talk about how to solve quadratic equations in standard form. All right? So we'll do that. We, this is our last chapter, and we're done with Algebra 1, and I'm going to start on Algebra 2. So stick with me, keep trying, and I'll see you next video. Bye.